All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, this is Mao speaking, and we're going to have a, a webinar about our single axis motion control module that we just recently released. And I'm going to talk about a little bit detail and some hands-on about uh, this module today. All right. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, our control solution overview about our uh, control product line and how you can use our product to uh, make your own control solution. Then I'll talk about some more details about our uh, IR motion control unit. And then I'll give a short walk about how you can uh, start a new project about using uh, the IR PU01 mo module. All right, so this is our uh, control solution overview. So first, we're going to have a uh, codices of PLC controller. So right now you can use our HMIs in the CMT series. So we have seven inch, those two are the seven inch and 9.7 uh, 9 inch. 15 inch, and then we have we just released a new one, which is called the CMT controller, which is a uh, IoT controller. And then we got we have uh, couplers that you can connect with our self POC controller, and then we have digital input and output, and analog input and outputs. And what we're going to talk about today is our pulse unit. So you can see from the name that this is IRPU, and PU means pulse unit. And the, the last character, uh, this is, the last letter is P, which means it is a, a source unit, just showing here. This is our uh, motion control module. So what you can do with our control module is you can use like in any scenario, including like food industry, textile industry, plastic industry, etc. anything that you need uh, motion control. And we can support up to uh, four axes per coupler. So that means for each one of the coupler, you can have four uh, IRPU01 modules. And then you can imagine that if you have multiple of, of the coupler, then you can have more and more axes connect to our soft POC controller. Okay. So this is our uh, scenario that we're going to talk about today. So a uh, codices soft POC controller connect through the can open bus, which is our uh, a can open coupler, which is our IR COP module, and then it will control the motion unit here and taking high-speed pulse inputs either from a manual pulse generator or any encoder uh, sensors. And then it can send high-speed pulse output to motor drive, just like shown here. Or you can send the pulse output to a linear guide to uh, move a linear motion. So this is uh, a more detailed look at, uh, at uh, our uh, pulse module. So on the top is the input and uh, at the bottom is the output. So first we have the pulse uh, differential output here and then we have a pulse input for the encoder and the MPG or anything differential and taking four different digital inputs. So one of them can be home sensor a positive limit and a negative limit. And then outputs, you can have high speed output here because uh, when you sense something from the pulse input, you can, uh, we have a special function called digital cam switch. So when your motor rotate to a very specific degree, you can send different combination of digital output here. And also our uh, pulse input and output, uh, we support uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, and post direction, different combination of uh, pulse input and outputs. All right, 
I'm going to talk about uh, the features. So um, if you have already downloaded our control library on a website, so you can go to uh, our website. I'm sorry. Uh, .com. Coming back to the uh, website. So if you can go to our website to download the package, and then you can see that we have several uh, motion control library already ready for you. And we design those uh, function blocks uh, according to uh, the POC open specification. So you can see that from the name. So we have a motion control, power on, stop, and many different uh, function blocks. And I'm going to talk about one by one about the features and the function blocks that we have with the motion control unit. So first, we'll start from the discrete control, which is a positioning. So moving to a uh, an absolute position or relatively from the current position, like a plus 10 or minus 10. And we have buffered and blended moves for uh, if you have multiple commands, then we can help you to blend them or mix them together. And then we have velocity control, which is a continuous uh, control. And then we have a uh, synchronized motion, so you can have uh, one, two different axes, uh, one master and one slave. And the slave unit will follow the master unit, just like a gear. Okay, and then we have homing, capture, and digital cam switch. So we'll start from, uh, hold on a second. Start uh, with the positioning. So we have move absolute. So what is move absolute? So you can move from any place and to a specific location. And then we have move relative. So you can move relatively to the right and to the okay. All right. And we have buffered and blending moves. So buffer means that uh, you can send multiple move commands. And then we will uh, catch those commands. And then when, uh, when we finish one, and we will continue to the next one. So the command will be buffered, so you can see the block box here. So it moves from the point zero to one and to two. And blending moves is that um, uh, we will help to mix uh, dip from point to point together. So you will notice this. Uh, you will notice any stop here. So it will move from the p zero to one, and then immediately with the same velocity and accelerate a little bit and to the point two. So it's a better and smoother uh, movement solution. And we have velocity control, which is a, a continuous control. So you can, if you have, you, you don't have a linear guy, maybe you have a, a rotor or motor, then you can uh, make it rotate at a constant speed. So just like this, with a given acceleration and deceleration. Okay, and we have a uh, special function called V bias. So V bias is designed that um, maybe some of you have some experience with a stepper motor. So for stepper motor, if you are uh, at very low speed you will have vibration, you will have resonance, some bad uh, situation, and you don't want this. So people would like to increase the speed, ignoring ignoring the acceleration. So increase the speed to this high level so you can avoid the vibration and the resonance caused by low speed. Okay, so this is our uh, V bias. And then we have uh, S-curve profile, or you can call uh, jerk elimination. So you can imagine when you are trying to moving something, you 
if you move and stop, you will notice that there's some uh, vibration. And so just like if you look at the picture here, uh, if you move something, increase the velocity, and then you stop, then you will notice there, like if you are moving a water tank, you will notice that the water is shaking and moving. So by using the S-curve profile, you can eliminate those uh, physical effects to a minimum. So you don't have uh, you don't have to worry about the water spilled out to the ground or uh, your item is being uh, damaged or something like that. Okay, and then we have uh, this is called gear gearing or uh, synchronized motion. So we can take uh, pulses from different encoders. So you can imagine this is a master motor and then this is the slave motor. So we can take encoder inputs from the master and then maybe with some ratio, uh, like the ratio here, we have a, a ratio numerator and denominator. So maybe the master moves uh, 10 degrees, then we can move like one degrees or maybe a hundred degree with the ratio. So this is gear synchronized motion like this. So if you have a manual pulse generator, you can rotate the um, MPG and then rotate the, uh, and to move the linear guide or the motors. Okay, so let me just show you right here. Um, to pull up the uh, picture. All right, so right here I have a, this is what I'm, I am here right now. So I have a uh, manual pulse generator here, and I have a web camera installed on the linear guide. So I'm going to open the linear guide, uh, the, the webcam here. All right, so I'm going to move, and if you can hear the sound, I'm moving the MPG right now. All right, so what I'm, Going to, I'm showing here, I'm moving the linear guy with uh, my hand. Okay. So you can see from the webcam. So this is a uh, actual uh, application that you can use with our uh, control uh, motion control unit. So you can have our uh, IR COP can open coupler and connect with the IRPU here and you can see the IRPU is taking uh, encoder input from the stepper motor and sending the uh, uh, post output to the stepper motor right here. So we'll, go, we'll, we'll come back later. So let's go back to the slide. All right, so this is uh, gearing and uh, synchronized motion. Right. And we have also a feature called homing. Well, everyone has homing. And we follow the same uh, specification designed in CIA402. So we have 37 different homing modes. So you can move, uh, you can either uh, reach the home from the positive or from the negative uh, limit. Okay. And we have a special function called capture. So because we have uh, digital inputs on our uh, motion module, so we can take an in induction sensor here. So when your part moves, you can notice that it stops here. So when the sensor notice that there is a part coming in and you will start counting the pulses or the, uh, the time and then count until the, the object moves to the end, then it will tell you uh, the number of pulses that has been done on the motion module and also the time that the object uh, run on the conveyor. Okay, and then we have a feature called digital cam switch. So if your uh, motor rotate, and then once you, once it rotate to a different 
zone, then you can set, set a different uh, combination of digital outputs. Okay. So this is uh, our digital chemistry. So when uh, your motor runs to this zone, then you can have two digital outputs to be on. And then when you rotate to this zone, then you can set those two digital outputs to off. So this is our uh, digital cam switch feature. All right, so those are the features that we currently have with our, our IRPU modules. And of course, we're going to have some more in the future, but right now that's what we have here. And then I'll talk about the wiring for the uh, IRPU module. So we on the top here is uh, our uh, in pulse differential input. So you can have just what I just show you here that um, I have an MPG. So the MPG is sending those uh, in encoder output to our module. And then we can have uh, four different input taking like the positive limit, negative limit sensor, and the home sensor from the linear guy. And also we can sending those uh, pulse output to any uh, motor drive like a Mitsubishi MR J4 drive. So our pulse differential output A plus, A minus will connect to their uh, PP and PG. So you can see that this is uh, positive and negative and their P and G and P and G here. And then we can also send those um, digital output to tell the drive to start or to reset. So our digital input default meaning is uh, the first uh, digital zero will be positive limit and negative limit for the uh, DI1 and emergency stop for DI2 and then home homing uh, sensor for the DI3. And those can be changed by parameters. So uh, the capture feature that I just talked about, you can uh, change those uh, settings using our object dictionary. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some parameters, parameters that you're going to uh, configure when you start using our uh, control, uh, motion control unit. So the first thing you need is uh, to set your user unit. So we, this is also called scaling. And then you have to set the limit so you don't want your motor to run too fast and too or too slow. So you have your limits and you have uh, you can set your pulse input and output mode because some motor they have they only take A B phase or some only take uh, take the clockwise and counterclockwise inputs then homing. So the user unit here is uh, you have to configure uh, the position encoder resolution which means uh, the number of pulses for a single motor turn. So if you turn the motor for if you want to turn the motor for a full circle then you this is the number of pulses that you need to send. And then the gear ratio for it. You can see from the picture on the right. So uh, this is the scaling is taken from the position encoder resolution, sending to the motor encoder and driving the gear box. And then we have a feed constant telling that if you are using a linear guide, then uh, how long you will travel for a single turn because you know, most people they are using bolt bearing uh, linear guide and so they are actually rotating to uh, move linearly. So this is user unit and then we have limits. So you can, you, you, well not you can, you have to set the maximal motor speed. So this is in uh, pulse per second. So, so the user unit here, this is pulses per revolution. So uh, the number of pulses for a single motor revolution and this one limits here is the pulse per second. Okay. 
And other uh, parameters here are in user unit, just like what you defined here. Okay, and then we have uh, pulse input and output mode. So our pulse mod, our uh, motion control unit, we support uh, clockwise and counterclockwise signal, pulse only, and pulse interaction, just like here. So if you are moving forward, then you can notice that phase B is in low, is at low, and then if you're moving backward, and then the phase B will be high. And A, B phase is that um, the phase A will run faster than B, in, that means uh, forward. And if phase B runs faster than A, that means backward. Okay. This is, you, you have to configure those uh, pulse input and output method in, before you start using our IRPU unit. And then homing, so you can set the homing method that is defined in CIA uh, 402 specification. And we you can set the homing acceleration and offset for the homing. Okay, so I'm going to uh, open up codices so you can uh, understand how you can start from scratch and use our IRPU module. And before we open up codices, so we need to understand that there is a state machine that we're going to uh, have internally. So if you start the motor uh, like power on and it is in disabled state, and then you have to call the MC power uh, function block, then you will enable it, then you will go to a standstill state. Then you can call homing because you need a reference for the absolute motion. And then you can uh, do some discrete motion. And after uh, you're done with the discrete motion, you will come back to the standstill state. So this is the state diagram. So the uh, motion control will move from one state to another and backwards. So like if you are going to discrete motion by calling a function block here, moving uh, move absolute or move relative. And then at the same time, if you want some emergencies, uh, not emergency, some, you want to stop the motion, you can call MC stop and then you will uh, move to stopping state. And when the stop is done, it will go back to the standstill state. Okay. so. If you have some problem with your motor, then you will go to the error stop state. Then you have to uh, reset it and then re-enable it with the MC power function block. Okay, so uh, what you have to do, well actually those are, uh, are already documented in our user manual. So if you, uh, open up our user manual here. So there's a quick start uh, section in the manual. So I'm going just to repeat the same steps that we have in the manual so you can uh, get the real, uh, see the actual steps that we have to do okay. right here. All right, so I'm going to start a new project with codices. And then I'm going to use our built-in codices and using uh, function blocks. Okay. And right here I'm going to, because right now PLC is standalone, nothing input and not, no outputs. So I'm going to add a CAN bus. And on the CAN bus I'm going to have a CAN open manager. Okay. And on and with the can open manager, we're going to have an IR coupler, a can open coupler. And remember that we ha you have to choose version 1.3 and or higher. At the device, all right. So that then you can. Uh, over here, you still have nothing. So then we move 
move on and add some access here. So if you have other uh, IR modules, you can edit here. And we're going to have a PU01 here. So because uh, for one coupler, uh, we can have up to four different axes. So you can see 0, 1, and 2, and 3 here. And you can insert them any place along the IR module. So you can have uh, maybe like a digital input and then have a second axis. Or you can have different other uh, remote IO modules. Okay. And then you add the third axis. Okay, they don't have to be the first or they can be anywhere uh, because anywhere along the IR uh, modules because you know we have a, a special IBUS system so they all communicate at the same time so it doesn't matter uh, which place you uh, insert the PU module so let me just cleared up those things all right so right now I'm done with the module edit, editing and come back to the POC program. So I'm going to uh, right here open up the library manager. We are going to use our WinTech codices library here. Okay. When you're done with the editing, you can see that we have some MC Lite library and analog. And in the MC motion control line, you, we have several uh, function block here. If you want to see how you can use what different parameter, you can check out the uh, documentation here, like home and the hold and the power on. Okay, so you can see that we take, uh, it's a typo here, but it's input. So we need a uh, access reference. So for every a function block here we define here you need an access reference so in our POC program we're going to have a uh, access and then this is WinTech access reference light and we're going to have an MC power okay and we can have a move absolute here okay so I can just add a box here and use the uh, NC power to power on our uh, motion module. And the axis here is the axis that I just add. And the enable here, uh, I, let me just add another enable power. This is enable power okay and then I'm going to have a start servo so servo on a boolean variable so x servo on here and copy this okay so we don't actually need all those state here but you can uh, save them to a different variable to check the status because sometimes uh, when you power on your motor and something bad will happen so you can uh, check out those different status but right here I'm going to delete all those question marks and I'm going to have another box which is MC move absolute okay so this is always on and at the uh, access reference and to execute the move absolute I need a uh, run absolute here okay well actually it's going to uh, open up uh, the existing project that I have right now so this is the one I just show you through the webcam open up the webcam here okay so let me log in to to it okay so you can see right here so 
what you need is uh, uh, define all those variables with our function block and also remember in our IR coupler and go to the can open IO mapping we have uh, you have to uh, map all those variables because uh, our MC modules they control the axis through this axis variable and this axis variable is mapped through the IO mapping here so you can see that the axis 0 is mapped to a uh, specific uh, uh, can open variable here so you have to follow uh, the naming so you can see that profile acceleration the name is very similar so if you don't have the manual you can uh, check those naming here the variable variable name is very similar okay. let's go back to the program here so right now I have power on uh, my uh, IR unit and the motor then I can maybe do homing and move it with a a given velocity here. So let me open up the codices and the webkin. So I can tell the motor to, to start running. Okay. Did you notice that the, the roulette is uh, rotating right now? Then we have a feature called continuous update. So if I change the speed right now by 200 and update, so you can notice the speed is a little bit faster and if I change it to 2000 okay due to network speed you, maybe I think maybe you can notice a little bit difference but I'm going to move it to a full speed okay just like a car you you can't notice any numbers on the disk right now All right, so this is uh, how you can use our uh, function blocks. So uh, with the execute to run the jog, uh, the move velocity, and change of speed on the fly using our continuous update. Okay. And if I want to stop it, I can turn the execute to false. All right, and also we have a move absolute. So we can tell uh, the motor to run to a specific location. Okay, this is a hundred, uh, a thousand, and let me do it two thousand. Oh, have to turn it off and turn it on. Okay, and also I can uh, tell it to back to. The, the home. Okay, so this is move absolute. And also we have move relative, and this is pretty much the same. So I can tell you to move to a uh, thousand pulses. Okay. Or I can tell you to uh, you know, maybe four thousand to make a run, make a complete complete circle. So this is our uh, function blocks that we have with our uh, motion control libraries. And if you have problem with uh, setting up the uh, IRPU module, you can check out our uh, user manual and double check the step that you have. So remember that I just mentioned here that the uh, IO mapping, uh, you have to configure it and right here so it is documented here and you can after that you can just log in enable the MC power and start control the motor okay so this is the overview of what I have here so I'm going to move the manual pulse generator again So if you are looking at my camera, you can notice it is shaking a little bit. So that is the thing that I told you that at very low speed, the stepper motor 
we have some vibration and resonance. So I move more and more, just like camera control. Okay, so you can see on the left, I have another uh, CMT3090 controlling the linear guy, and I have the uh, another uh, 3072 to control those motors. All right, and here is a, a, a product list for our IR series and the control controller. So uh, for HMI, we have those uh, 7 inch, 9.7, .7 and 15 inch, and we have different couplers, including the MAPAS, TCPIP, can open EtherCAT, and our digital analog input output and motion module here. So uh, that's pretty much for the webinar for today. So if you have more uh, questions or any uh, problems, you can contact us or